If you have a Cintiq and you go to Wacom.com, you can download the latest version of the driver and you're going to notice that something has changed. They've actually added a thing called a radio menu. If you don't have the Cintiq, don't worry about it because the pop-up menu that Wes has on one of his tutorials earlier on explains how to use it with the Intuos and the Bamboo and other tablets like that. So just with the Cintiq, it's actually been replaced. If you go under Functions, you'll notice where the pop-up menu was, you now see Radio Menu. Works exactly the same way, it's just a little bit more convenient. Let's have a look at it. Notice that we have different portions here. We have actual eight different portions, and you can select any one of these portions here, and we can control it. Notice here it tells us there's a label. If there's something, if it's empty, it just shows disabled. So let's grab this segment here, and we're going to add a new menu. So we're going to choose Submenu, and then we can add a name in here, and let's do that right now. We'll put in the word Photoshop, and notice that it appears here in the menu. And if you look on the left, notice it's now in the list. So we can select any one of these. If we choose Command, notice you see all the controls that are available under Command. Same with media. Under Photoshop right now, it's blank because we haven't set any. Click top to show the top level again. So basically what happens is when we click one of these, we'll see those options. So for Photoshop, let's go and select some now. You can just choose the portion here just by tapping on it that you want to put a keyboard shortcut. So let's do that right now. We're going to use keystroke. And I did Command Shift N, and that'd be Control Shift N on Windows, and it creates a new layer. So let's click OK, and now we can type in New Layer. So click OK, and now you see New Layer. Let's add another one. I'm just going to tap there, and then we're going to add Keystroke. I'm doing Command J, and that would be Control J on Windows, and that copies a layer. So now we have these options here. And all we need to do is we can just go through and we can set all those for whatever we want. And if you want more, you could go to the top level and you could set these different segments. And you could even change some of these other ones with the presets on them. Now once you've set up your radio menu, it's important to be able to access it. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose the pen. Right now I'm using this grip pen here. So choose a pen that you're using. And then set one of these toggle switches. I like to use the back toggle switch. You'll notice it says radio menu. So now when I do that, anytime I can tap that and notice here I get our radio menu. So I can click on Photoshop and I can see the options that I have set. Just hit the little X to make it go away. We can see we have the commands. We can go down there and do these different things. So those will be available all the time. So let's just close that out. And now we can be working on our image. We can select it. We could go Photoshop and we could choose new layer and notice that we can now create a new layer. So that's how you use a radio menu. Like I said, it works exactly the same as a pop-up menu. It's just a little more sophisticated and a little bit better organized and enables us to make all those different controls a lot more accessible.